Hello, nerds. Thank you very much for joining me right here on Generally Nerdy for the whole news episode. This is your week in nerddom as brought to you by me right here on November 12th, 2019. And we're talking, we have a pretty big episode. Uh, music and gaming, fairly small in, in perspective, but plenty of stuff to talk about in comic books. Uh, really interesting rumor mill to get through. And it, let, let's just hit the intro. Okay, housekeeping. Before we get into the proper news, we've got... We're going dim. Uh, not going dark completely uh, like I once planned, like we did last year. Not doing that. We will still be doing at least one weekly episode, but it is going to be significantly smaller. Instead of doing, what is it, six different sections, one, two, three... Four, five. Yeah, instead of doing the six, sometimes seven when we have literature to talk about, but so instead of doing the six regular sections, we're just doing one of the regular sections, and that one section is going to be the rumor mill. Only going to be doing the rumor mill after November 27th, as that is the day I turn old. So, uh, from that day until the end of the year, it will be just a rumor mill uh, week in nerddom. There will still be videos on the channel. I will still be publishing things, just not the news. Uh, I have... I have two interviews still that are sitting in the can from Dink. I have at least two interviews from Starfest that are in the can. That Those two are going to take a little bit more work to do. Uh, I, I really want to redo the Adventures in Photography because I lost Adventures in Photography uh, episode... 14, I think, from Salt Lake Comic Con. Not the most recent one, but the year previous. Remember I said it was working, and then all of a sudden I lost all my data. And so I still have the raw pieces. I just don't have the Premiere file anymore because reasons. I don't understand, but whatever. Uh, so I would like to try and get that one done. And as of the new year, we're going to be starting with a season count. So everything will be rolling over into season two. How to YouTube, how to Comic-Con, Adventures in Photography, all of these things, the week in nerddom itself, the show you're watching right now, all of these things will be picking up a season count. And I'm not going to do like they do on Hot Ones and count a season as eight freaking episodes the season will be the year so season two will be year 2020 season three will be 2021 so all of the episodes for those series that fit inside that year go in that season make sense okay uh, but yeah that is that is where we stand right now with the housekeeping let's jump into the news and music news we only have one piece like i said it's it's really short it's really interesting though because i'm a big fan of jamie josta who the news is about jamie josta if you don't know is the lead singer for hate breed uh and if you don't know who Hatebreed is, uh, you obviously have a different choice of music than I do, which is fine. But, you know, you might want to skip forward a little bit because this might bore you. Jamie Josta is releasing a new solo record called The Lost Chapters Part 2, Column 2, maybe. Uh, I don't know what the word is in my notes. I swear I took really good notes and now I'm looking at this printout going... I don't know what that spells. Uh, so, but whatever, it, it's 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 his second Lost Chapters record. So there you go. Uh, coming out December 13th, and he released two singles, one of which you'll find a link to in the description. I couldn't honestly find a link to the other one, but it is up on Sirius XM. So if you listen to any of the metal stations on Sirius, then you have likely heard both of them. Uh, the song that we have linked down in the description is When the Contagion Is You, and it features Matt Heafy from Trivium. Now, I've said all of the information and I've told you I really like Hatebreed and therefore, by proxy, like Jamie Josta. And really, 
honestly, all of the other projects he's done, he was uh, he was the lead singer in uh, I can't remember the name of the freaking band. It was one of the dudes from Crowbar was in a band with him, and, and it, the name of the band escapes me. He did that project, which was really fun. Uh, he was the host of Headbangers Ball on MTV Two for a while because who else is going to be better than Jamie Josta to do that? Uh, his podcast, all of these things are really great. This song, however, really he's trying something new. I'll give him that much, but it doesn't work well with the Josta I know, so I don't know. Uh, not the biggest fan of this tune. Uh, again, link in the description if you want to go listen to it. Then tell me I'm wrong, and let's have that conversation in the comments. But that's what we've got for music. Now, we're talking TV news. TV streaming. I, I, I'm still getting used to the, the new names of the categories, I guess. So TV streaming, first thing we have is a, kind of a dual update over on the Disney Plus side of things. And we're not going to be talking about the issues because Disney Plus has launched with very mixed results. They've been having some issues. We're not going to discuss that because I don't really know exactly what's going on with that. I was more worried about the content and not the access to the content necessarily. I will like I will likely be talking about the Mandalorian in a video on the channel some other time, not right now. It's not news necessarily. It, the first episode has aired and there has, there are analyses, so you can go find those, but that's not what we're talking about. We are talking about She-Hulk as well as Moon Knight. Both of these shows have announced that they have found their head writers and the head writer for She-Hulk is going to be Jessica Gao. And if you don't know that name, it's not necessarily anything that's wrong with you. Uh, writers don't usually get the spotlight like they should. But if you do know that name, then you know that Jessica Gao is the head writer in charge. Well, is the main writer that is responsible, I guess is a better way to say it, for the Pickle Rick episode of Rick and Morty. So now she is the head writer on She-Hulk the implications are kind of amazing. <laughs> uh, but then also, again, head writer over on Moonlight side of, or Moon Moon Knight, Moonlight, listen to me, Moon Knight side of things is Jeremy Slater. Uh, Jeremy Slater, again, if you don't know that name, I'm not holding it against you, but if you do know that name, then you know that Jeremy Slater is the guy who developed and was uh, partially showrunner, executive producer, and head writer over on Umbrella Academy for Netflix, which is kind of huge because they stole one of Netflix's biggest names because Dude was the one that was responsible for the creation of honestly one of the better comic book adaptations done in a long freaking time. The Umbrella Academy is brilliant. If you haven't seen it, go watch it. Season two is going to be coming soon. Anyway, uh, so yeah, Jeremy Slater will be the head writer for Moon Knight. Uh, next, we have casting updates. I know I don't like to do casting as much, but if it's the only thing we've got for Halo, then it's the only thing we've got for Halo, and we're going to talk about it. So casting updates for Halo over on Showtime. Uh, and I'm going to be reading these, so I apologize if I stumble or it sounds uh, awkward or whatever. But uh, first we have Danny Sapani. Uh, yeah, Danny Sapani. I, that's... I'm, I'm sh pretty sure that's how you would pronounce that. Uh, has been cast as Captain Jacob Keyes, who is, quote, a dedicated military man, a war hero, and a caring father, who finds that working alongside his daughter and ex-wife is usually the cause of conflict rather than comfort. Interesting. Uh, next, we have Olivia, uh, Olive, rather, Olive Gray has been cast as Dr. Miranda Keyes, who is, quote, a brilliant UNSC commander who is dedicated to understanding the technology, language, and culture of the Covenant, but she'll have to lean, or sh sorry, she'll have to learn to navigate the politics of the UNSC to get what she wants. So, some procedural stuff being hinted at there. And then, our final casting announcement is Charlie Murphy. No, they haven't cast a dead man in this role, though I wasn't able to find any other credits for this new Charlie Murphy, Murphy person. Uh, Charlie, Murphy, <clears throat> Charlie Murphy is going to be playing the role of McKee, who is, quote, an orphaned human who was raised by the alien covenant and shares their contempt for humanity. Really interesting. 
really, really interesting. Uh, I don't know. I it's hard to read too many implications into that, other than uh, again the the procedural implications as far as and if you don't know what a procedural is procedural csi uh uh uh, criminal minds all of those shows law and order all of those shows are what you would call procedurals so even supernatural is a procedural by and large i mean there are overarching stories uh the stuff that begins at the end or the beginning of one season and then ends at that season and even multiple season arcs and all that jazz that that's not to say it's going to be boring like law and order is that is to say though that we do have some idea of what the structure will look like so that will be interesting uh that is what we've got there next we're talking about real quick titans season three has been announced even before season season two ends kind of expected this one it's the biggest thing over on the dc universe app so yeah uh no word yet as to what it's going to look like once hbo max launches though if we will have access to the dc universe tv shows and just not the comic book side of things still no idea what that looks like but they are working it out according to industry buzz uh and then our last piece in tv streaming is the new trailer for the harley quinn series This trailer, this is a full proper trailer, not just a teaser, so we get a good portion of what to expect in this series. And a large part of that is going to be the Legion of Doom. Harley, it looks like, for at least this season one, is going to be attempting to get entrance into the Legion as an official member. And also we get Alan Tudyk's Joker, and that I think is the best freaking part. And honestly, watching this trailer, it looks like it's going to be better than anticipated, because I'm not a huge Harley Quinn fan. Matter of fact, in a lot of times, I'm... I'm quite the opposite. I feel like Harley Quinn is a shallow, underdeveloped character who really doesn't work unless she is part of a uh, Joker storyline. This, though, and 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 for you know Martin over at uh, Nerdy Legion, I know you you say that her new book, the new uh, trade, I think that that came out or the new graphic novel, I guess, uh, is amazing. I've heard that from multiple sources actually. So. I maybe my 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 opinion on Harley Quinn is not the most up to date, but from the bits that I have of the character, it seems that she only works the best, and in a lot of ways, only works when she has the Joker to play on or to support. Uh, that is just where it is. But this animated this this trailer makes it look like. That's not really going to be the case. It makes it look like this is going to be a pretty solid series. And I like that. But that's what we've got for TV. Let's jump over to movies. And in movies, uh, we have, first off, there's a couple that we're going to be talking about just because I like the players involved, not necessarily because there's a whole lot of nerd cred involved. But we have Guy Pierce, who has been attached to play in a movie called Seventh Day. And the elevator pitch for this movie is Training Day meets The Exorcist. And just based on that alone, the fact that Guy Pierce is going to be one of the leads and it's got that elevator pitch, I'm on board already. <laughs> but that's what we've got. Uh, next, we're talking about a movie called Prisoners of Ghostland. And uh, we've talked before on the show, Bill Mosley is a fantastic horror uh, stalwart. He, he's in pretty much all of Zombies horror movies. Mosley has signed on to do this movie, which the other big noteworthy thing for this is that the director, Sion Sono, uh, it's a, so he's a Japanese director and he's been described as the most subversive, one of the most subversive directors making movies today. So Bill Mosley, American horror movie stalwart, the guy who's always there, who does great work in American horror. Uh, if you Doubt me, go watch House of a Thousand Corpses. He is far and away the best thing about that movie. Um, Bill Mosley, that guy, is going to be in a Japanese horror movie. I'm, uh, again, sign me up, let's go. Uh, Next, we're talking about the animated movie, Scoob. Just got its first trailer. I have yet to 
watch it all the way through personally, but that's because I want to do a reaction video. I saw the first like 10 seconds of it and I was like, nope, we're going to shut this off, do a reaction video. So, you know, stay tuned on Generally Nerdy. You can go watch the reaction video because I'm a big Scooby-Doo fan. <laughs> Next is one of my favorite and also one of the more confusing updates for the episode. Uh, Mortal Kombat, the movie, is being rebooted. We know this. Uh, we just got the announcement, kind of, sort of, strangely, vicariously, through a, a weird, shaky video that Naitara is going to be in the movie, confirmed by writer Greg Russo. Uh, she's going to be played by Elisa Cadwell, stunt woman who has been in quite a few other nerdy movies as a stunt woman. Um, so I, I'm so confused by this announcement. Naitara, while I am super intrigued by this as well, doesn't really fit into the story in the early stages. And I don't understand how she can fit into the story in the early stages, because in order to start to restart this story in order to tell this story in a cohesive manner you need to set up the primary players and the primary players in in the grand scheme of things the primary players are the realms so you have to understand the realms and the two main realms that in the mortal kombat franchise are earth realm and outworld so you <laughs> naitara is part of a different realm Though technically she her realm does get taken over by Outworld, so like maybe they're gonna factor that in. But the her inclusion in this first movie, presumably Greg Russo is trying to get what he can in the first movie in hopes and just in case we don't get a second movie, but this one sounds a little shoehorny. Like, I really dig the character of Naitara. I also dig the implications, because if you bring in Natara, then that also means you're going to be bringing in uh, Chameleon and Reptile and their race. Uh, so, because they, the, the Naitara's realm and their realm, are closely related. So... I like that, because those are parts of the mythology that I feel like deserve a little bit more attention. But... Not this early in the plot, in, not this early in just the mythology building of the, the whole thing. So really torn on this piece of news. Uh, and then our last piece in movies has to do with Sonic the Hedgehog. We got a brand new trailer with the redesigned character. Looks just like those leaked images that we got a couple of weeks ago. And honestly, this new trailer explains it a little bit better kind of sets this up to be more watchable <laughs> i guess is a good word to use because it's not like he's an alien that comes down from outer space he comes from a different universe sure but like teleports here through a ring fitting be considering the you know the goal of every sonic game is to collect rings right and then free all the little animals um so Honestly, the, the, the look is better, the explanation of what's happening in this movie is better, and somehow the, the, the Jim Carrey portion seems to be better in this as well, even though I'm pretty sure they didn't change anything with Dr. Robotnik. They're just giving us better information as to what they're going to be putting in this movie. So, super excited about this. Link, uh, go check it out, because you can, I mean, it's up on the YouTubes. Go watch it. Now we're talking about the other tiny piece, and that is gaming. And in gaming, we again have just one piece to talk about, and that is Sony's PlayStation 5. They just filed a patent for a cartridge. Yeah, that's right. I don't... I, I, uh, now, patents get filed all the time because people, even though they have great ideas they, they, they and they need to uh, make sure nobody can steal those ideas, those ideas don't always get implemented. So, it's possible that we won't be seeing whatever this cartridge patent is. But it's really interesting to think about, is this a way to augment discs? Because you can only fit so much information on a Blu-ray. But on a hard drive, which effectively that's what a cartridge is, on a hard drive, so on 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 solid state on a solid state drive, you can fit terabytes worth of information. You you really can't do that on Blu-ray. So 
maybe this is the new, potentially this is the new data store, like the new physical media for people who aren't downloading their games. They, they can now do cartridges. Or maybe this is a proprietary memory card system like we had with the first three... Four? Is there a memory card on... P no, I don't think there's a memory card on the PlayStation 4. But there is on 1, 2, and 3. So maybe that's the way that they're going with this? It's really fun to speculate, but we really have no solid uh, evidence as to the direction they're taking this cartridge idea. So we've got to move on. And we're moving now into the final section, which is comic books. Well... The final section that I'm recording, because I haven't done whatever. Rumor mills after this, but I whatever. All right, so, comic books. Let's talk about those. <laughs> First thing, uh, this Tom King run on Batman cannot end soon enough. This is your spoiler warning. The, uh, the most recent issue of Batman, so Batman, I believe it's number 83, um... We we saw some stuff happen. So this is your spoiler warning. If you haven't read it and you care about such things, technically we're past your uh, the, the the socially agreed upon time limit of three days. With comic books, I feel like that's a fair time, but we're like a week out because the new books come out tomorrow. So uh, this is your spoiler warning. Five, four, three, two, one. In the last issue of Batman... Tom King killed off Alfred. I'm going to say this one more time because I feel like he's not getting it through his head. Tom King, whatever it is you're trying to do, whatever lasting legacy you feel like you're going to have on the Batman mythos is just going to be undone by Tinian as soon as you leave the book because you're garbage. I hate this. I hate this. Tom King... Uh, has given us some really good stuff in the past. I don't feel like anything he's done on this Batman book has been that good at all. It started off in a good direction. It started off like, all right, I can see the potential for this, but all of that potential got squandered. And now he's just rolling around in the in the, in the garbage. And and this, but so whatever. So we're getting in order to in order to make this story element makes sense. We are getting a one-off book written by none other than James Tinian IV and Peter J. Tomasi, who are both going to be writing the book once King gets his butt out of there. Uh, but this is going to be the way that it works in the universe because Tom King didn't spend any time, you know, going into the effect of Alfred's death, he just killed Alfred because shock value. And that's good. That is the w most lazy garbage. Oh, Tom King, just finish and get out. <laughs> GTFOH. Um, yeah, so we've got uh, this, this one off book that kind of explores how Batman is going to be dealing with the death of Alfred and how it's going to affect not just Batman, but all of the Bat family because it's going to affect everyone. And then when we retcon it later, it's going to be better because Tom King's not a part of it anymore. All right, so that's... that's I'm going to get off of that but because it's just aggravating. Um, next, in comic books, we are talking about the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. We talk about these guys a lot, so... Get used to it. Uh, so, if you are unaware and you haven't been keeping up on your week in nerddom right here on Generally Nerdy, uh, then then you don't know that there is a new turtle as part of the group. So, we have the four guys, Leo, Mikey, Raph, Donnie. Uh, added to the group was Jenica, who is a female, as was fairly evident by the name, I feel like. Um, and so to kind of give her a little bit more fleshing out of character, she's getting her own book. Now, it's not like it's going to be a giant arc. It's not an ongoing series. It's just a three-part book that kind of gives us a little bit more of how she's dealing with the fact that she has become a mutant. And I, I feel like this is honestly really cool. I, I really dig the art so far that we've been seeing from it. Uh, the writer and author is Brom Revel. And issue number one launches in February. So I, this is, I'm super stoked about this. This is a lot of fun. Uh, next, we are talking about... Again, more spoiler alert for the X-Men this time. If you're reading the new X-Men books, then five, four, three, two, one. 
we have spoilers coming in for X-Men number two. And the reason we're bringing this up, because I don't generally, again, like to discuss active storylines, but because this has a broader reach, uh, I feel like it's newsworthy. So in X-Men number two, we see the death of Professor X. And this is significant because, well, you say, what about the resurrection that we've talked about in previous previous episodes? That's a good point, because they could still theoretically resurrect Professor X's body and his powers, but then the the question becomes, how does he get his mind slash soul back? Because the way the resurrection process works is the five resurrect the body and all of the powers and everything physical, and then Professor X, with uh, with the help of Cerebro to some extent, then d- effectively downloads the mind into this blank shell that the five have recreated. So if you're missing one of those people that is involved in this process, arguably the key person, the key mutant that is involved in this process, where does that leave his thoughts or soul or however you want to think about that? That's It's really interesting to think. I'm really interested to see what happens in book number three. This this arc just so far is, is really worth a read. Um that's all we've really got there. And then the last thing we're going to talk about, uh, I was going to talk spe- again, specific plot points for the ongoing Bat- uh, Batman who laughs everything right now over in DC. Cause he's in a lot of books, uh, but there's just so much going on. Needless to say, I can't wait until the Batman Superman book, at least this first arc comes to an end so that I can grab the trade and see all of the stuff that I've missed in all of the other books, because this arc, if you are not keeping up with Batman Superman, or if you're not keeping up with anything that's going on right now, as far as the Batman who laughs in DC, I really feel like you're missing out. This is some prime stuff. This is the best stuff happening in DC, because most of the other garbage is... Apparently, DC is like three three years behind Marvel because they're doing their friggin' equality checklist box push that Marvel started doing like three, five years ago. So maybe it's going to not last as long as it did over in Marvel. But either way, there is a ray of hope, and part of that ray is Batman, the Batman Superman book. And actually, the biggest part of that ray is the Batman Who Laughs because he's the savior that DC needs. And now, let's talk about rumors. And this rumor mill is actually pretty big, so... uh, Really, one of these rumors is kind of gigantic, and the rest of them are pretty normal. So, uh, first off, we are talking about Dr. Sleep. Uh, yes, I know it, it not really out yet, but... Or it, it, it is out, and it's not doing... I can't remember. I'm, I've been so buried in all of the other news. Uh, Warner Brothers is repair is is reportedly working on a sequel to Doctor Sleep with Mike Flanagan, who is directing this first one, will also be directing the next one, but will also be writing the script for the next one. Again, according to the rumor, uh, the next one we have we actually have a lot of Disney and two Star Wars rumors. So first thing we're going to be talking about. Uh, is uh, some interesting stuff around the Star Wars test screenings. So the Rise of Skywalker has been going through test screenings, and rumors around the test screenings are as follows. First, there are three different cuts being test screened. The first cut being the the J.J. Abrams, Kathleen Kennedy cut, the one that they put together, uh, and that one apparently did not do so well. An average audience score of like 40. Uh, and then the second cut is the Bob Iger cut is what it's being called. And the Bob Iger cut is basically the Abrams Kennedy cut with a couple of things added, a couple of things kind of rearranged, nothing, no real major changes, but a couple of pretty significant changes, I guess is a fair way to put it. Um, and that cut average audience score of about 50. 
And then the third cut, which is the biggest part of the rumor and the part that I don't know if I believe at all, but the third cut is reportedly done by George Lucas. And according to the rumor, George Lucas has more footage in his cut and rearranges a significant portion of the second and third act of the movie. I don't know how much of this to believe. It's really interesting to think about. And and the George Lucas cut average audience rating is 88. So if this is true, we're going to be seeing a little bit more George Lucas when it comes to Disney Star Wars. Is that a good thing? I don't even know anymore. Uh, so that's what we've got there. The next rumor, this is the biggest rumor. This is this is the most sizable rumor. Uh, collection of rumors, I guess, is more appropriate for Miss Marvel. Uh, there has reportedly been a leaked audition tape, not for the lady who is presumably going to be playing Miss Marvel, because they are in early contract negotiations with an actress for the role. Uh, that is not what this is about. So in the audition tape, some interesting things are referenced in the dialogue that is presumably taken from the Miss Marvel series. References are made to uh, the new Avengers, a Terrigen Mist, and the Inhumans, which is super interesting because we've talked about the fact that they want to reboot the Inhumans. We've also talked about uh, how they're eventually going to create a new Avengers team. All of this is rumor, so nothing is set in stone. Um, and also the dialogue is uh, in reference to or in uh, communication with someone that is being referred to Captain, which is very likely Captain Marvel, so Brie Larson's going to be in the series. Makes freaking sense. That one probably has the most legs of any of this. Uh, so the next portion of the rumor uh, is that Black Bolt and Lockjaw will be the Inhumans that we see in the Miss Marvel series. And uh, Black Bolt, uh, where is it? Niall DeMarco is in negotiations to be Black Bolt, not Vin Diesel. Interesting. Uh, also, the villains of the series are going to be, are reported to be the Inventor and Maximus the Mad. Uh, ben Wisha will potentially be the Inventor, and Freddie Highmore will be Maximus, according to the rumor. Uh, and then Finn Wolfhard, this is the final piece of this Miss Marvel stuff, Finn Wolfhard, who is really in everything right now, uh, has been a reportedly approached to play Kamala Khan's best friend, Bruno. Uh, there's also rumors that deal with the parentage of Miss Marvel Kamala Khan, uh, I feel like we've talked about that before. Also feel like it makes sense because Mindy Kaling is reportedly going to be playing her mom. Mindy Kaling, I feel like that's almost an official announcement. It's not really rumor because she's one of the ones that uh, is pushing to get this made. So that one kind of makes sense. So we're moving on now. We're moving over into WandaVision. And in WandaVision, we got some plot leaks. Not going to be reading the plot leaks. That is not the point of the rumor mill. We're just going to be talking about the implications and some interesting things that come from the plot leaks. So if, I mean, it's not really, I'm not, again, not reading the plot leak, but apparently Ultron is going to be coming back in WandaVision also makes a lot of sense because of the nature of the comic book, comic book version of that character that they would then kind of bring some of that nature into the live quote unquote live action version of the character. So very, very awesome. Our next rumor is a gaming rumor. Uh, Bioshock four has always been rumored to be somewhere in development. Uh, it, for a long time, it was said to uh, to never be coming out because they couldn't get a proper studio to get development. And then they found a studio, and that studio is rumored to be nearing the point in development where they can actually announce that the game is going to be coming out. And also, they are hiring for a quote-unquote end game design lead, which implies kind of that we're going to see some sort of fallout ish or outer worlds ish style gameplay after the main uh, uh, narrative of the game. So that sounds awesome. Uh, Bioshock is probably one of my favorite games of the last two decades. No joke. Uh, and then our final piece of rumor 
has also to do with Disney Plus because these things just come all the time. Disney Plus has rumors abounding because it is one of the biggest sources of entertainment for us right now, right? So Disney Plus reportedly is going to be doing a Lando series starring Donald Glover. Very interesting. Very, very interesting. And that's what we got for rumors, guys. Aren't they just so juicy? And that's the end of the episode, guys. What did I miss? What should we talk about in the next one? Let me know in the comments down below. If, though, you want to go deeper into the conversation, jump over to the website, generallynerdy.net. That is the place that you can get all of the freebies. You can get links, really, to everything that I do. It all starts on the website, generallynerdy.net. There is a Patreon if you want to go straight there, patreon.com slash generallynerdy. There is more content there. There is about to be a lot more content up there as of the after the dim period period as i keep calling it uh so after we go dim there's i'm going to be doing a regular video for the patron exclusive content so sign up now while it is still just a dollar to get in and, and, and yeah patreon.com slash generally nerdy is the place to do all of that uh if you're falling behind, though, in your nerd news you want to catch up then you can click or tap the box it's about to show up to the left of my face to do that uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, all of that jazz. You know what you're supposed to do at the end of YouTube videos, right? And before we go, guys, always, always remember that if it's generally nerdy, it's probably here. <laughs>